back, ladies and gentlemen, to the 2017 Bridgewater's Finest Movie Awards, and we are in day three. It is Wednesday of the release week, and it's time to talk about one of our, uh, one of our main events, we'll say. One of the videos that I think most people look the most forward to, and that's where we trash crummy movies, and there has been certainly its own share of crummy movies in 2017. These are the top five worst movies of 2017. Now it's worth pointing out, obviously, we're going to be doing a top 30 best movies of 2017, and that begins tomorrow. And you might be asking yourself, well, you're doing 30 best movies, you're only doing five worst? And that's because, yeah, I mean, like, we don't really seek out bad movies like we actively did yeah. years ago. Like, we would actively seek out bad movies. And I still kind of do, do, but somewhat. the philosophy has kind of changed a little bit, where it's like, the bad movies are going to kind of come naturally, yeah. but we don't really actively seek them out because we're more interested in talking about the shit that we really like. It's just that, hey, there are some movies yeah. that are just really crummy. There's and there's like, there's two things, because we're not professional critics, so we don't get to go see a lot of, like, We're movies. better than the professional critics. We're better, we're critics. legit critics. But we don't get to go see just movies for free. Like, you know, you, you know critics, they go see multiple movies a week. Right. They just see it, right? Or they have more money, so they just afford to go see shit. Like, we gotta pay for this shit. And I'm not going to pay for something that I think is terrible. Or stuff just gets sent to them. They're like, yeah. hey, review our movie. Yeah, and all, and then and then also, like, we used to be, like, top ten worse and stuff. But honestly, I think I can speak for you. We're, we're, not, we're not really the guys you go to when you want to see somebody on the internet shitting on movies. Because there's lots no, of people with fake anger and stuff at movies on the internet that you can go on. We're just going to talk about them. Maybe it'll be entertaining. But we're, we're, we're positive. But we're not the critics, we're better than the critics. We're legit critics. In saying that, hey, if there's a small movie studio that wants to send <laughs> us that movie for free... <laughs> Bring it. All right, here we go. Worst movies of 2017. Top five for each of us, as well as a few honorable mentions. Dishonorable mentions. Dishonorable mentions. Come on, how'd you mentions. fuck that up? I don't know. Dishonorable was... mentions. All right, folks, so here we go. Top five worst movies of 2017, including, of course, as he said, some dishonorable mentions. I only have two. He has more than I do because he saw worse movies, apparently, than I did. So I only have two, but I'll do my dishonorable mentions and then my number five. He'll do his and then his number five, and we'll go right back to our back and forth. So my two dishonorable mentions for 2017 are Baywatch, which I only ranked a 40, and Arsenal, which I only ranked a 30. Um, Baywatch, again, I just like, The Rock has an interesting, has himself an interesting movie career. Yes, he really he does. does. Yes, and I think does. he might be the guy, the, the biggest guy in Hollywood, who's just like, eh, I'm just going to do whatever I want. <laughs> right? And, and he has that kind of credence and he has that kind of leeway because he's The Rock and he brings people, he puts butts in seats. The most electrifying man in sports entertainment and in entertainment. And, and Baywatch is by no means a, a great movie. They, but, but it's an entertaining movie. And, that's, and you can then now glean from that, like, that's why I only have two dishonorable mentions because, like, if that's almost as bad as it gets, then it's, you know, you know I didn't see a ton of bad movies this year. Yeah, I, I don't think, I think it's a bad movie, but I don't think it's, like, a horrible movie, if that no. makes sense. Like, at the first 20 minutes, I, I, was, I remember watching it being like, maybe Baywatch would be pretty good, because it was yeah. kind of funny, kind of entertaining for the first 20 minutes, but it, it lost it. it, it yeah, it, I mean, it's still it, not it a good movie, sure. but it, there's worse, there's way worse. Exactly. And the other one, Arsenal, I, I literally remember almost nothing about it. Is that Nicolas Cage? It's a Nicolas Cage movie. Uh, a large portion of the movie takes place in an arcade. Uh, it, there's baseball involved at one point. And that's about all I can really remember about the movie, but I remember it was pretty darn crummy. He's making some real shit. I mean, I didn't see that, but I see, like, Nicolas Cage movies <sighs> pop up, and it's just like... Fuck, I guess Nick Cage is another one in Hollywood that's just like, eh, I'm just gonna make whatever I want, but 
where it's The Rock and he's endearing and entertaining, Nick Cage is like, you're entertaining, but for a totally different reason. And he's phoning it in. It's true. Like, The Rock legitimately enjoys what he's doing. Nicolas Cage is past that point. Like, if you give Nicolas Cage a fun director, like, when, when he was, like, with Herzog and mm-hmm. Bad Lieutenant, he fucking puts in work. It's true. And he's entertaining. But he's just phoning it in. He's releasing these shit straight to DVD or TV movies it's or true. whatever. And it's just like, why, oh, Nick? Why? Oh, you're entertaining. He's like just you. He's just done. He's just done at this point. My number five worst movie of 2017 is Fist Fight. Now, like most movies, it, it has some positives. And here is a comprehensive list of the positive aspects like this of this movie. Um, every second that Ice Cube is on screen. Um, Charlie Day, about 50% of the time, he's kind of hit and miss. Half good, half That's his, man. That's his career. That's pretty well his career. And, like, parts of Tracy Morgan. Like, I'm not as hard on Tracy Morgan as I used to be. I actually kind of find him sort of endearing now. But sometimes he's just a little too hard to take. Um, But he actually has moments in this movie where, you know, he's pretty funny. But, like, Ice Cube being awesome and Charlie Day being pretty good, like, half the time, really just, like, can't save this movie about two teachers that are going to get in a fist fight because reasons. Um, the, The great cardinal sin to me of... A movie that's just a straight-up comedy. Like, not a not a dramedy, not an action comedy, not a whatever. Just a straight-up comedy movie. The cardinal sin is not being funny. Because that's all, that's it. That's If you're a comedy, that's all you have to be. Yeah. Like, Super Troopers. Super Troopers would be the worst movie of all time <laughs> if it wasn't funny. Yeah. Because it's like, it's got nothing else. Because it's just, it's just a straight comedy movie. For giant stretches of time in this movie... It's not funny. Like you have sprinklings of laughter within about a nine, like I say, about a ninety-five minute runtime. I do have to point out the bits in the movie that I did think were funny. Um, the big Sean scene when he, when Charlie Day's on stage with his daughter and she's singing like "You little stupid ass bitch, I fucking with you." That's that was kind of funny because it was completely unexpected. So that had the that had that element of it. I was like, oh shit, okay, that's kind of funny. That was good. Um, the mariachi band that started playing the Rocky theme. I was like, yes. <laughs> so the mariachi band and like there were parts of the fight that were like relatively entertaining. But that's like seven or eight minutes combined. In a, that's less than ten percent of the movie. So I mean, at a rating of uh, what I give it, thirty out of a hundred, Fist Fight is my number five worst movie of twenty seventeen. All right, good picks. My dishonorable mentions. Uh, number five was a handsome, a Netflix mystery movie, just a slog. That's all I'm gonna say about that. There, but there were some things I liked, but whatever. Number four, I'm, I'm including a short film, okay. Olaf's Frozen Adventure. <sighs> Fuck that movie because it's too long, and it was before Coco. I was gonna say, otherwise known as that thing you have to get through in order to yeah. see Coco. Like, don't get me wrong. It, it, it wouldn't be on here if it was just before Coco. I mean, I would resent it, but I wouldn't be like, oh, it's a bad movie. I just think right. that was poor. But it's just a bad movie. Like, it's okay for, like, the first three minutes. And you're like, come on, let's go with it. Um, number three. Like, 35 minutes long, yeah, guys. Sorry. It's so long. And it had, like, four songs in 35 minutes. I'm like, this is too much music. It's so long. <laughs> it's so long. It really is. Do you remember the two people that walked out? Yeah, they walked out. Because I think they thought they were in a Frozen movie accidentally, and they just fucking they just walked out. They just left. Yeah, they're like, we're done. It was like our viewing of Coco. We were the only ones in the yeah. theater. And then we're like, good, because this is a fantastic movie. Yeah, I mean, it's so great. So the hell with sharing. I almost walked out. If I didn't want to see Coco so much. Right. Um, oh, yeah. So number three is The Party. It's like a chamber drama. It takes place in, like, one building. And, okay. like, you got to... It's it's not funny. It's trying to be. I mean, there's probably a line or two that made me chuckle a little. But it's not that funny, so it fails as a comedy. But then as a drama, it fails because they're not really... Like, these characters aren't saying anything interesting. So when you... And it seems like the, the movie's trying to, but it's just not. So, like, when you have a movie where a bunch of people are just talking mm-hmm. in, like, an enclosed space, you got to say something interesting. And I just didn't think the party did. Okay. Um, number two was Snatched. Just not a funny comedy. And my number one dishonorable mention is his favorite movie of the year, Fifty Shades Darker. Damn. The fuck that movie. Um, nah, man, those movies are better than you can. There's some, there's some of the Tom Pilly shot 
That's all, all I can give That's it. about it. That's Still fair. shit. I will take that. <laughs> Still shit. But my number five is your number five, Fist Fight. Damn! You got like, yeah, you got like, I got like nothing it. to add to that. Um, I think I, from the way you talk, I feel like you liked it a little more than me. Oh. We rated it around the same, but again, our scales are Our rating really scales are totally think, different. But like, I feel like you liked it a little more than me from the positivity you give. Like, there's a couple things that made me laugh. Mostly, it just failed. The jokes just didn't work. And that's really all I have. Like, you said it all. I, like, even I just like Ice Cube. Even, yeah, in, even I, in I movies like, that are bad. Man, I like Cube. My number four worst movie of 2017 is actually a movie I talked about a little bit earlier in an earlier video. It is The Circle. The Circle, obviously, as we mentioned before, it was based on a Dave Eggers novel. It's about this tech company that basically creates this social media platform, like kind of a proto, not a proto, but like a, like Facebook, the next generation, basically, where you're like, your whole life can be on this social network and, but it's, but it's, it's, it's malevolent and it's, oh my God. Um, and, and again, it's, it's disappointing to say the least that you have a movie that's got Emma Watson Tom Hanks, um, Bill Paxton, rest in peace, um, John Boyega, like, it's got talent, this movie's got talent, and it's so stilted and unconvincingly performed and poorly directed and looks not very good, it, it's just like, everything about this movie totally collapses on itself within about the first ten minutes, and I have to read this one uh, it's a it's a snippet of my actual review of this, and I feel like I need to self-aggrandize and, and give myself more credit because I actually think this part of the review is really well written. Um, the movie plays out as a subdued, shallow cartoon. The company, a millennial's wet dream place of employment. The story, a baby's first corruption big brother tale that wants desperately for you to believe it's saying so much more than it actually is. Shots fired. You basically, basically though, it's because it's it's just it's so surface level, and you can see what's coming from a mile away, and it wants you to believe that it's got this big message about how tech is taking over our lives, and it's like there's nothing in that message that you haven't heard before, and it hasn't been done a million times better in different ways. But don't worry. The moralistic white girl trope swoops in and saves the day at the end. So don't, I'm sorry I just spoiled the ending of this movie for you, but don't worry, it's not worth it to get there on your own. Ultimately, I look at this movie as L-A-Z-Y, capital letters across the board, lazy. At 25 out of 100 for a rating, The Circle is my number four. There's three worse than this. My number four worst movie of 2017. I just could not bring myself to watch that. No. I kept like, it's, it's on my list, I'm gonna watch it. Cause Justin said it's so bad, I should watch it. But then Justin said it's so bad, so I shouldn't watch it. Right, so, so I was like, why would I waste my time on this? Yeah, so I just never got around to it. That's disappointing. It's and again, disappointing. That's, that's different from years past. Cause if I was like, yeah. hey man, this movie's really shitty, you'd be like, ooh, I have to watch that. <laughs> yeah, I know, that's different. I just never get around to it. So my number four is Transformers The Last Night. Which seems like a, which seems like a cheap, easy pick because even though they make lots of money, you never meet anybody that's like, "Ooh, Transformers is great." People are always. Well, I know critics. one person. So it seems like a cheap pick, but here's the thing: I like Transformers movies. I don't think they're great. Right. I don't expect them to be great. They're they're all way too long. They <sighs> they focus too much on the human when really would they. They should focus more on the robots because the robots are basically humans anyway because they have the characteristics of humans. So like to shoot one in these human elements, you don't need so much of it and you don't need your movies to be two and a half hours long. So I want to stay and I want to fight them. <laughs> what the fuck are you going to do? You're four years old. <laughs> Sorry. But, so. Like, I saw this with another friend, because apparently I had another friend at one point, besides this guy. And Ooh. I came out of it, and I was like, what a piece of shit that is. And he said to me, well, it's not so bad. You just, I just, you just had to go in not expecting much. And I'm like, I did. I went in expecting just, like, an okay Transformers movie. That's all I wanted from it. And that's all, the, 
every other one has given me that to some degree where it's like, ah, it's okay, whatever. It was right. a fun little blockbuster. This <laughs> is just a piece of shit. This, like, it does the same thing that every other one does, it, but it does it more incoherently. And I and I don't usually use that when describing a movie because most of the time when people are like, that was so incoherent, I'm like, well, no, it made sense to me. Uh, but the thing that pissed me off the most was they're like, oh, Optimus is going to be evil, Optimus is evil, Optimus is evil. Right. And that was the whole thing. And they were building it up. He was uh, off on another planet. And you... How long was he evil, Tyler? <laughs> so long. <laughs> and yet, he comes back to Earth. They have a fight. It was, a, it was an alright fight. But it was short. And then he's good. Yeah. And I'm like, you, why couldn't Optimus come back and wreck some shit? Because here's the thing. He was being mind controlled. When you're being mind controlled in a movie, you have a free pass. You have a get out of jail free card. I was kind of hoping to do as much shit as you want. Yeah, they just didn't do it. He came back and was like, ooh, ooh, ooh. And then it's like, oh, shit. I'm good again. I'm <laughs> this? This is, this is it. This is the movie. Right? This is Michael <laughs> Bay. This is... this. Yeah, I got some money. But yeah. I was getting fired up. No, it just, it just pisses me off. That's what pisses me off because you could have had arguably the most interesting Transformers movie of the bunch. Mm -hmm. Because Optimus Prime is awesome. <laughs> and an evil Optimus Prime for a little while would have been a lot of fun. And I'm sure the movie still wouldn't have been great, but it would have been what I wanted. And because they fucking cheaped out, they wussed out, mm. we were treated to treated to the one of the worst movies of the year, easily the worst Transformers. There's like no redeeming, well, excuse me, no redeeming qualities outside of the fact that okay, it looks fine. That one point pisses me off so much. I was so you should have, like you think I'm fired up now. You should have seen me when I saw the movie. And right. the next day, I was ranting about it at work, and I was so upset. Not like angry, like, but, but just like, so disappointed. Right. I watched the movie, and I was like, this is so genre diverse without being particularly good at any of them. Like, the movie is like, okay, what did I, what did I wind up writing here? Um, it's part action, part war film, part comedy, sci-fi, fantasy... Like, it's a little bit of everything, but it's not good at any of them. Like, it's not. It's, it's, it's it, sci-fi is the closest thing that it gets to being decent at, and, you know, whatever. Now that we've got that unpleasantness behind us, let's have more unpleasantness. Yay! My, my number three worst movie of 2017 is The Bye Bye Man. Don't think it, don't say it, don't think it, don't say it, don't watch it. Um, I avoided that that's, movie. That's, that, that's pretty much the long and short of this movie. It's, it's, it's the bye-bye man. It's, it's horror. Um, I, the highlight of the movie for me, and we'll start with positives. The highlight of the movie was the fact that the first house that you see in the movie looks like my house with a garage. <laughs> it does. It looks yeah. exactly like my house. It just has a garage. And I'm like... Hey, they filmed this in my house. They just... No wonder it's so bad. Exactly. No wonder it's so crummy. I directed this. Um, yeah, it's just I was like, oh, okay, that's kind of the highlight of this movie. Um, and then I'm going along, I'm going along, and the other highlight of the movie is uh, there's just a random little girl that's like wandering around a college party. Why? Reasons. There's no real reason why it's happening. They're just like, why is this little girl being allowed to roam around this college party? Um... That, that's it, and that's, that's the only interesting things about the movie. This is one of the most, by the numbers, derivative horror movies that I think I've ever seen. Oh, it, it's the most generic. You can call everything about this movie. Like, as you're watching it, you're like, this is what's going to happen next. And that's basically what winds up happening next. Like, there's... When, when you're sitting there, even if you're actively... I, I'm a movie watcher that I actively don't try to get ahead of the movie. Yeah, same. Because I'm like, I want the movie to tell its story. And then if it's shitty in telling its story, then I can call it out on that. But I don't want to get ahead of the movie. Because then what am I paying for? I think that's a good way to be. Because then if, like if, if it surprises you or whatever, it entertains you. Yeah. And if you somehow manage to predict it, 
even though you're not trying to, but yet you still somehow then it's like, well, that's really predictable. Right. That's how I get you. Like, if I predict something that goes on in a movie, that shit was predictable. Yeah. Because I'm like you. I'm not trying to. It's just sometimes your brain's like, oh, this is going to happen. Yeah, your brain is constantly yeah. working. The worst part of it is the goofiest part of it, which is the performances. None, and, and even that would be okay if the tone of the movie was ho like horror comedy. Like, if they were trying to actively make a bad horror movie, that can be done. That's not this. This is trying to be an actual horror movie. This is trying to be, like, a tense horror movie. And it's not that. It's not any of those things. It's not tense. It's not scary. It's not visually interesting. There's nothing interesting about it. At a rating of 20 out of 100, The Bye Bye Man is my number three worst movie of 2017. Two worse than that one. <laughs> I love this. I love this thing you got going on. I'm like, there's one more worse. All right. So my my number three worse is a movie called Song to Song by a director named Terrence Malick, who I'm personally not a big fan of, mm -hmm. but he's made some movies that people call great and I won't argue with like Days of Heaven's Badlands like there especially Days of Heaven like there's some great scenes like there's some great scenes in his movies Ter you Terrence know? Malick has a name yeah we'll put it that way yeah Malick's a dude man like right. he's, he's <laughs> Malick's a dude bro <laughs> he's a dude but no he, he makes okay. he's a homie my guy <laughs> <laughs> he makes these like ponderous movies like normally slow and that's fine that's his thing and that's okay um that's not what I hate but like this is the first like his last movie I think that he made was Knights of Cup or whatever it was called and I was like on the Knight of Cups Knight of Cups yeah I have to level a criticism of him on him in this well this movie that I hate because I it's to hate it mm -hmm. it's pretentious <clears throat> I don't like that criticism because who the fuck are you to say what how something needed to be said mm -hmm. right that's a s silly that's one of the silliest criticisms in my opinion but I'm leveling it on him like a hypocrite I guess uh, technically it's decent but it's that's right that movie is that long isn't it's it it's so uh. boring like it's so boring and I've watched movies that are so long and so like one of my favorite directors of all time rest in peace he made such long slow movies and he's awesome like Andre Tarkovsky was fucking awesome but this is just like this is Malick really passing me by right like cause if this is considered good which I'm not sure if people consider this good or not um if this is good then he he has lost me completely where at once I could appreciate him like alright not for me but I'm watching Days of Heaven, and there's like this locust scene, and that's really brilliant and beautiful and stuff like that. Right. Where where it was once that, this is like, a, it doesn't work for me. I don't have the same hatred for it as I do like Transformers, because Transformers are one thing that pissed me off. No, but like it had one thing, central thing that annoyed me so much that they didn't capitalize on. This was just, ultimately, and it comes across like a lazy criticism, because you can just level on shit, is it's just boring. Mm. It's boring. It lingers too long. He doesn't have anything to say, and that's it. And there's two worse than that. There you go. <laughs> Stealing my bit. <laughs> my runner-up, my number two worst movie of 2017, and it's a movie that you mentioned earlier, and you talked about earlier. Ah, it's raw. And we talked about earlier. It's raw. I was hoping you would mention this. Yes. My number two is Raw. It, there's well, there's a scene relatively early in the movie. I guess maybe it's about a third of the way through. Not quite the halfway point. Um, it, it's uncomfortable watching her, like, kind of scratch the hell out of herself after they forced her to eat meat yeah. for the first time. Uh, so that, that was really uncomfortable. And I was like, ah, okay, if the rest of the tone of the movie is like this... That I'm like, okay, this is like one of those things like, this is going to take me out of my comfort zone. And this could, on that level at least, be kind of interesting. Probably around the point of the sister bonding Brazilian wax that I realized that this movie's really quite bad. And uh, I pretty well mentally checked out of it right at that 
point in and it's unfortunate because it's a foreign language film and i like supporting foreign language films but like let's leave aside the whole messaging whether it's intended messaging or not of you know and i know it's not directly saying this but it's the whole eating meat leads to cannibalism kind of thing and i know that's not exactly what they're saying they are trying to basically sort of say that eating meat is bad um, but like the whole eating meat becomes cannibalism message so let's put that aside the movie tries to sell itself as not just a horror but a horror and a drama and an art film and an art film the horror elements I can give you because some of them are there and so, and they're not all done terribly like some of them are there and that's and it's like when she, when like, when the one sister forces the car accident, and it's like, okay, like this is a horror element that's actually kind of interesting. A drama? The movie's too stupid to be a drama. <laughs> so it's like, if it was stupid, but it was trying to be a spoof, great. I do full well believe in not just judging movies based on whether, hey, I like it or I didn't like it, but also judging movies on what they're trying to be. Yes, as Roger Ebert. As Roger Ebert says. But it's trying to market itself as an effective drama, and I can't do that. Like, I, there's, I had no intrigue whatsoever in the relationship between her and her parents, or even the relationship between her and her sister, or the relationship with her and her roommate, who is gay, but they have sex, but he's gay. And it just struck me as, like, this bad manga that's, like, every cannibal girl needs a gay best friend or something. It's like, it just sounds like a bad manga. And this is just a bad movie. Like... <laughs> I don't know, this, I, I just, I couldn't get behind it at all. At a rating of 20 out of 100, Raw is my number two worst movie of 2017. I got some shit to say. All right. Okay. Great. First of all, bad year for cannibals. Because, because, <laughs> because it's Raw, a bad year for cannibals. Raw wasn't good, and The Bad Batch wasn't good, although that's a cheater pick, I think, because it doesn't seem to be in my list. Okay. First of all, it's not as gross as you think it's going to be going in. Because people are like, this is so gross. It's really not as gross. Which is fine with me, because I'm not a gore hound. I'm just saying, mm -hmm. it's not as gross as you think it is. Um, you. Not you, but you, whoever you is. Me, you, me, him, her. And her. Um, I, I didn't hate it as much as you. I gave it a 45, which on my scale is like my close but no. Mm -hmm. Where I'm like, I almost gave it a passing grade. It's not a terrible movie. But, like, I don't recommend it. Um, I think uh, Marillier's... I don't know her last name. Marillier mm -hmm. or something. I guess that's the main character. Like, she's fine in the role. Like, she does, mm -hmm. she puts in good work. And this is, like, these are the reasons why I can't, like, completely hate it. But I don't like it. She's fine in her role. But the film just feels really dishonest. Like, there were times where they just put Justine in contrived situations... To further her cannibalistic tendencies. Like, yeah. okay, we got a cannibal movie. We're just going to dream up some stupid reason, as you say, stupid. Some stupid, silly reason to put her into this because, A, like, you got to do it smart. You got to work that in more naturally. And I didn't feel it was like an organic process. I would say some of them were cheesy and the coming of age aspects were subpar. There were good parts scattered throughout. I actually enjoyed the ending. That was kind of a point of contention among people of mm. some people like that ending was shit. I kind of liked it. I won't ruin it. I kind of liked the very, like the end. Um, but I felt cold and the last thing I say about the movie is because one of the things that people were saying was it's so deep. Like what are these issues? It's, it's fake death. Yeah. It doesn't exist. It's an art house film that fools you into thinking that it's some deep movie when really it isn't. And I hate to say this because it has potential. She causes her dog to die. I don't want to... Because when she eats the finger, she blames it on the dog and they put the dog down. I forgot about that part. You bitches. How can I care about that? <laughs> all a dog man. wants to do is be loyal to you. That's all the dog it's wants. True. It's all the dog wants. And you gave the dog up. My number two. Or your number two. Your Whoops. I'm ahead of you. Uh, I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm pumped. Mine is a movie called Wish Upon, which was a horror yes. movie about, like, a girl that... Man, we don't like horror movies. Because here's the thing. They're cheap to make, right? So True. anybody can make a horror movie. Yep. So that's what they do. 
if you look at movies that are released, like straight to DVD or whatever per week, there's 18 horror movies, True. and they all suck. <laughs> so that's how Jason Bloom has become a millionaire. Yeah, but he produces he's, but he's, five million dollar horror movies that even if they suck, yeah, they make, make their movie, make he, their money. Like, you look at a Bloom house and you're like, eh, it might be <clears> good. <throat> anyway, Wish Upon, yeah, it's a movie about this girl who finds a box and she, if you make a wish, that comes true. But then something really bad happens. Okay, like like she's like, I want to be popular, and then someone dies, right? So that's the premise. Not a bad premise, really. No, but the problem is, it's like. They just keep going through the motion of like she does she does this thing, something bad happens, she does this thing, something bad happens. It's just not fun. It's just like it's not scary, first of all. Right. But like it's just not fun. So you're just going through the motion, going through the motion. There's not really any horror here. Right. I wore headphones when watching this, because I often do, because I have a bunny, I don't want to scare him. Um, loud noises makes him go. Right. And I just don't want to terrify the little guy. And it's not scary. There's no tension. Like it wouldn't have fucking scared my bunny, and he's a prey animal. <laughs> like I love that line. That's great. That's and that's why I recycled that line. <laughs> exactly. Because it's it's just not at all. It's the most unscary horror movie I think maybe I've ever seen with headphones on. And that's really all I have to say. It's just a horror movie that feels so bad at being a horror movie that my that it wouldn't hurt my bunny. <laughs> That's just what it comes down to. If you One of the most scared animals I've ever seen in my life, and it wouldn't scare them. If you can't scare a prey animal, yeah. what's the point? We are definitely going to be labeled as horror haters. But this is the thing. This guy really likes horror. I, re, really good horror is great. Yeah. Like, I like it less so. Shitty horror is not. Yeah. In the most well-kept secret on the internet, my number one worst movie of the year was Valerian and the City of a Thousand Poops. Um, God damn it! Just it's oh, I, I can't I can't even I can't even give it enough respect to say the name properly. <laughs> um, I, I say this without the slightest hint of hyperbole. Valerian might be the worst big budget sci fi movie I've ever seen because it, it, that movie cost money. Lots of money. Like that movie cost a lot of money. And I'm just gonna, while I talk, I'm gonna pull up the Wikipedia article because I wanna see just exactly how much money that movie cost and just exactly how much money that movie made. He shouldn't have attained that much <clears throat> money for that. No, no, absolutely. Like it's uh, amazing that it got made because it's not a known property. It's and true. yet they threw like Star Wars money at it. Right. And it's like, it's, and I mean, I get it that, like, okay, Luc Besson, right? Fifth Element, right? G like, looks awesome for the fact that it was made in 97. Yeah. And, and a lot of people really liked that movie. And Valerian and Loreline, a lot of people really like that graphic novel. And it's, you know, very highly acclaimed. Here we go. I got the numbers right here. So the budget was somewhere around uh, about $210 million Jesus. to make that movie. When you think about it, obviously they would have gotten some of that back in tax incentives and blah, blah, blah. I don't really know how the French cinema market works. But my basic rule of thumb, and this has apparently been shown to be misguided, but this is my rule of thumb, a movie has to make back... Pretty well twice its budget it does. to that's, make that's money. A general accepted. <clears throat> right? And it's not that's not hard and fast, but basically has to make that back. The number was I think 252 that it made. So it made just a little bit, or just a little bit, 40 million dollars, but still just that much over just its production budget. So if they didn't spend a dime to market the movie, it would have made 40 million dollars. But they, like, they they didn't. They spent a lot of money marketing that movie. And so, there you go. And that's, and the reason that that gets me so heated is that's going to make big studios in the future be like, I don't know, another big budget sci-fi that's not Star Wars? Like, a movie like that makes it less likely that another Star Trek reboot may happen. You know what I mean? Because you have to throw... A hundred and fifty million dollars at that, just because of the way that a Star Trek 
reboot would have to look as a big but you know as like a big budget and maybe star trek's a bad example because it's an established franchise but like new sci-fi yeah they just won't it get makes it harder for new sci-fi now to get made like this makes it harder for another chappy yeah. to happen even though chappy wouldn't have cost nearly this much but it, it makes it harder for a movie or a new arrival or a new like something something else like that it makes it harder for movies like that to get made and there were reasons to be invested in Valerian. Again, the CGI, which was not bad, and it had some sci-fi elements that were re looked really interesting that they did absolutely nothing with. They, they introduced them and then completely left them alone, did absolutely nothing interesting with them. The entirety of the movie is no fun whatsoever. You have two leads in Cara Delevingne and Dane DeHaan who couldn't have less chemistry yeah, if they oh actively tried. And their romance has a time frame that puts Romeo and Juliet to shame. Mm -hmm. Like, Romeo and Juliet was 14 lines, two kisses, and all of a sudden they're in love. Um, we, we, like, that, that's it. That's what, that's what Romeo and Juliet's romance is. And, and, and... You know, Valerian and Loreline are just like, hold my space beer. Like, and it's like, <laughs> that, there's, there's nothing romantic between the two of them, and then all of a sudden they're having sex on an escape pod. And it's just like, I don't, I don't, I don't understand, like, you don't like him, and then you immediately like him. And it's just like, the worst, tropiest, yeah. romantic elements. And look, I don't need my sci-fi to have a ton of romance in it, but if you're going to do a romance, can you fucking do it right? Like, that's it. That's, I, I don't ask for a lot, but I asked for a lot more than a sci-fi movie with a terrible screenplay with leads that have no chemistry and and just a totally under-examined elements within your own genre. There's no reason in this movie to be invested in anything, to be interested in anything, or even really to continue paying attention. Valerian in the City of a Thousand Planets, I was about to say poops again, <laughs> is utter garbage. Like, it's, it's just a garbage movie. And you know what? I have it written right here, and it's the last thing on the page, so Tyler can even look if he wants to. I have this rated 20 out of 100 right now. I'm changing it at a rating of 10 out of 100. Valerian in the City of a Thousand Planets is my number one worst movie of 2017. And as a fun fact, according to Wikipedia, The Last Jedi cost $200 million to make. <clears throat> this movie cost just as much <laughs> as The Last Jedi! So, oh. just to put it into perspective, because that's what I looked up while he was talking. Oh about my god. Ago, just because I was curious. That's horrific. Yeah. That's disgusting. That might make it less likely that Star Wars gets made in the future. Wait, we're done with Star Wars. Holy crap. Vale hashtag Valerian killed Star it's like, Wars. The difference? Star Wars made over a billion dollars oh, worldwide. Man. You ain't gonna see somebody up at the Oscars be like, yo, Valerian cost more money than Star Wars to make, and it sucked. <laughs> <laughs> all right, bye. All right, bye. Let's do this. I thought you were gonna be like, all right, boss. <laughs> all right, my number one is uh, a movie that I mentioned earlier. Can I guess what it is? Yes. Because you guessed, I think you got. Well, you guessed raw. I, mean, I guessed raw. It's got to be Salt and Fire. It is Salt and Fire. Yeah. Because swish. So wish. Because Salt and Fire sucks. <laughs> like. I, I, oh, Herzog, my boy, my guy. Like, the movie is somewhat competently put together, like, like in the sense of, like, things are edited together and they make sense in that regard. Sorry, I was just changing my score for Valeria. <laughs> <laughs> On video. Lo live. <clears throat> sort of. But, uh... Kind of. Um, Close enough. It's just, like, the strip lets it down so hard. Like, there's things... Like, let's see, I got one. I got one. I meant to look up more before the video, but... That's okay. So there's this guy in a wheelchair, right? Mm hmm Oh, wait, no. Let's start with this one first. Okay. Michael Shannon, who I got to say one thing. He got a shitty performance out of Michael Shannon. That's hard to do. That, that performance by Michael Shannon was, like, was one of the worst of the year. It's like, scrub it off the IMDb credits. Yeah, it credits. sucked. <laughs> like, Michael Shannon sucked. And I hate, I hate saying that. He says he won't take off his mask, but then he does. Um, one of the other villains, who's also in a wheelchair, 
He then stands up randomly, and the main character says, is this a miracle? And the, and the guy in the wheelchair is like, no, I only use a wheelchair when I am tired of life. Don't even, like, I don't, and, and it's not just that, like, like, one of the <laughs> things is that these people wanted to go to this one place. I only then, use the wheelchair when I'm, I'm tired, tired of life. life. Yes. Is this a miracle? Oh, hi, Mark. Is this a miracle? <laughs> did Tommy Wiseau write this? Yes, he probably did. I'm going to have to look that up. <clears throat> um, but yeah, the, the, the main characters, I, I can't remember the, the plot exactly anymore, and I don't want to. Um, <laughs> they they want to go to a place. Like, I remember this much. They want to go to a place, and the villains catch them. And then they're like, nah, you're not going to that place. But then they take him to that place later. <laughs> so I'm like, why does this shit happen? And I'm not even a guy that picks apart plot points like right. that much. Because I just like, A, I'm not that observant of things. And B, I'm like, like what you said earlier, so lost in a movie. Trying to just go along for the ride. That I'm not as picky as people. Mm-hmm. Which makes me a lesser critic in some ways. I understand that. But like this I did. So, so you're watching it, and they're doing all these things that they aren't going to do, but then they do it, and then this guy stands up with, with his wheelchair, and there's other scenes that I meant to look up to remind myself, but it's been a long time since I saw the movie, so I remember it. I went into more detail about the terrible... You've been enjoying life. Yeah, I've been enjoying <laughs> myself. I don't, I don't know how this movie gets made. Like, there's, there's just... I don't, there's not an audience for it. There's not... Like, Herzog, he likes to say things in movies, and kind of tackle maybe unconventional things okay. and whatnot. But, so, like, I can understand kind of him wanting to do this. I just don't know how he fucks up so bad. <clears throat> but Salt and Fire is a piece of shit. Uh, luckily, it wasn't made for $200 million, <laughs> So I feel like her talk probably made some money, but maybe he didn't. Hopefully up front. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, um, I mean, does that movie get made just because it's Werner Herzog? It just because the name propels it to getting made? Yeah, maybe. Maybe? There you go, ladies and gentlemen. There are our top five worst movies of 2017. Just as a refresher, you've just heard them. Our respective worst movies were Salt and Fire and Valerian and the City of a Thousand Poops. I have to, I have to, I can't, I, you know, whatever. It's salt and poop and Valeria in the city of a thousand Poop and poops. fire. Poop and fire, yeah, there you go, poop and fire. Uh, that's it. Those are our worst movies of the year. And coming up next, or tomorrow, if you're watching along like the good person that you are, our top 30 best movies of 2017 spread out over the next few days in a couple of videos. We can't wait to bring this to you. We're pumped for it. See you in a few minutes where we get started with the main event. Oh.